welcome to this new class. So I'm going to continue wetting the paper. This, by the way, is a cold pressed watercolor paper, 140 pounds. I am going to start with cobalt blue here and then a little bit of quinacridone red. So as you see, I'm not really overly mixing these colors. And the highlight is here. So it's actually kind of like here too, but you want some blue in there. I'm going to kind of mark it for myself. This is the highlight. That's not the highlight, but there's parts that are highlighted. But overall, like this is the blue that I see. So now I got rid of some of that paint from my brush, right? So what I'm going to do is go back here very gently and push a little bit of that paint because before I had too much paint. And then here, this is the edge. And again, this is the highlighted part, right? It doesn't mean that it has to stay white because I don't want that to be white actually. In fact, the highlight should have a little bit of a color. Now I'd like to grab this cobalt turquoise that I was talking about and see how that works. Of course, I did not, um, I've not done a blueberry with this color before combination, but I think it works pretty nicely. So I like it. So yes, I'm recommending to, <laughs> to use this cobalt turquoise light if you want to. I'm gonna wipe my brush on a towel. This feels quite wet. So I wipe my brush on a towel. The brush feels a little damp now, right? So I want to spread this a little more. Now I'm not done with applying colors. And now I'm gonna grab a little more of that cobalt blue there's Queen Red and then grab some of this indigo too. Actually a little more of the Queen Red, make it more like blue violet. So these are the darker sides or the side of the blueberry plus over here, of course, kind of staying away from here, but it doesn't mean that I entirely like have to stay away. And in fact, this side here has a little bit like, it's a little darker. So painting these blueberries like in general will not take you this long. It's just because I'm talking and explaining, but it should take you like maybe like 10 minutes the most. If you're like fully focusing on your painting, which is very important. Um, I do suggest watching this first and then trying to recreate on your own as much as you can. Because your eyes need to be right on your painting, like you need to look there, not on the computer screen, because then you're missing out on that timing to lift the colors and doing like all that little the magic, watercolor magic, right? So I, I have a little more of that paint here. I want to grab more of this blend. So I have this, this is basically the indigo, cobalt blue, and quid red. And you can see the colors are separated, but I want more of that cobalt, cobalt blue. And I grab more like a half and half like ratio. And it's just now the paper is drying and I really want to show more color. I don't want this to be too um, light, right? I don't want this to dry light. I'm gonna, with that same dirty brush, I just grabbed some of that cobalt turquoise light, for example. I added more of that there. And then I might as well add it here. So I still have paint, right? I want to now change the ratio between colors so I have more of the indigo, there's my cobalt blue, and then quinacridone red. The quinacridone red will give me that shade of like this purple, deep purple, especially that I'm using already this um, indigo. So these are the darkest parts. I need to grab way more of that paint. And it's not a bad idea actually to grab some Van Dyke brown. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of Van Dyke brown just right here because a combination of like indigo and Van Dyke brown will give you like a darker shade that almost looks black. And on a side note, like I really don't recommend using shade of black like straight out, out of a tube unless you're like intentionally trying to change a color or create a new color. You always want to mix colors um, by yourself. So to create that shade of uh, black, for example. Now, the paint spreads pretty fast, right? That means I have a little too much water on my paper. So I kind of got rid of it just a little bit. I kind of wiped it, well not wiped it, but I removed it a little bit with the brush, but you gotta be careful when you do that because it's easy to uh, make the paper like feel damp, like you don't want that. So I grabbed a little more of that cobalt turquoise light. And so this is like the, area right there, right? So I'm going to grab now milk like ratio of cobalt blue with that cobalt turquoise light. 
and now cobalt blue and quinacridone red. And now going toward these darker areas, so let's say over here, we do have like this brownish part, which is great actually, it will give us some more to than just the blue tones, right? We'll add a little bit of, let's say, burnt sienna, but here, I know I have a highlight very close to it, but I also want this other shade of blue, which is my cobalt blue, very gently touching, and then back to that quinacridone red slash indigo, make it a little darker, like right here. And last time we grabbed a little bit of Van Dyke Brown, so I just did, and I think it's a nice touch just to have a little bit of that Van Dyke Brown with the tip of your brush. So don't grab too much, it's just with the tip of your brush. You're changing the, ra the, the ratios too, but you're changing the shade of that blue at the same time. So I do want this to have a nice shape. With the tip of my brush, this is a softer brush, I went a little over here. I won't worry too much about it because that means I would have to go over or outside more. And I want to change the shape of it. So what I'm going to do is quickly clean this brush. Round 8 Golden 1 brush. So the most important is to have a fine point. And I'm going to wet it. So I'm going to grab some of this. This is um, Imi Desalone Yellow. Looks like I have a little bit of blue in there. But there's my Amy Desalone Yellow, and it does feel a little creamy. So I grabbed a little more water, and there's my um, sap green. So I have some of this yellow, Amy Desalone Yellow, and then sap green. And I'm hugging like the right side because I see like it, the highlights are on the other side, on the left side. And then I travel here as well. So again, because I'm moving everywhere, like I'm not just focusing here, I'll keep my paper wet longer in those other areas too. So it's like you continue wetting the paper basically when you do this. So just the right side basically, adding these shades, right? This is kind of like not so yellowish, but I'm gonna grab more of that sub green here and go back here and add it on the right side. So just focusing on that right side, but you know what? I feel like I need a little more water because to create that real brown. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm gonna clean my brush. When you mix red and green together, you actually create a shade of brown. So you really don't need to use burnt sienna or Van Dyke brown. So um, that's just on a side note because you really don't need those additional colors. So now I'm grabbing more of that green with the red. I'm going back here. This is still wet, but barely. So I gotta hurry up if I wanna add any more color. So now I have like even an additional shade of that brown, just because I now I'm not using like a burnt sienna, but instead I'm actually using sap green and uh, quinacridone red. So red and green and then just kind of placing these colors whatever I feel like it would look nice but I am following the reference it's just like okay maybe here a little bit right so now how do I add that darkest tone that I see so again I would grab red so there's my quin red and there is a little bit of sap grain but I need this to be like a cream top now and that's because I want to have the most control. And then to make it darker, I'm going to grab blue. So this is also uh, another, so, so this is blue as well now. So follow blue, uh, red shade. So follow blue, and additional color. Now it's almost too late for me to add it. I'm still going to force it in just to add it, this color blend just in some areas. Like this is still wet because I really want that contrast. So I'm just going to find the areas that are still wet just so I can apply a little bit of that blue with the green and red and why blue because to create a shade of green all you need is yellow and blue to blend those two colors together now I really have to hurry so I think that's pretty much all I can do here I'm gonna clean my brush you can do the same thing like you can smooth the layer with the damp brush now this is a little late but I guess it's still okay but if the sh there's no more shine then I suggest not doing that because then you just lift the colors 
So I pulled a little bit of that. Now the next step is to lift the colors. So this is my round three. Actually, I want my round two, songbird details. So that's my round two, songbird details. I'm cleaning the brush, wiping it on a towel. I want a damp brush. Now, where do I see the highlights? Well, technically, I didn't lose any highlights here, but I could use some lifting here. Oh, it's almost too dry. So, perfect timing to lift the colors is once that shine goes away from the paper. Now, I almost missed out there, but maybe I'll be okay here. Sometimes, I will, I very often actually use my rigger brush, and I feel like the rigger. Using a rigor helps actually to lift some areas that just don't want to lift, but I think I'm okay. I don't want to lift too much, maybe just some areas like here. I see highlights. So I do refer to the reference. I look at the reference and I try to figure out, okay, this is a highlighted area, this is a highlighted area. So I'm trying to lift. So now after doing this, because it's kind of like a lot of pieces, when I challenge you with that other piece, I think it's better to actually for you to break it down into parts so you don't paint the whole thing at once. And I'll show you in a second how you can break it down. So I'm just going to lift a little more. So this is finished. However, I am going to add another leaf here. I'm going to take a photo of it so you have the sketch. And I want you to paint that extra leaf on your own, okay? So thank you so much for your time. And please let me know, as usual, like if you have any questions. that the highlight has some color in it and in this case it's like a blue violet so follow blue with some quint red that's when I know I'm, okay this is going to have that undertone layer and I'm so when you look at the highlight this part is kind of really like white almost and then you have the blue mm -hmm. 